Hey there, fellows. Today we have got an engine, a car that can move under its own power, and here's what we'd like to try out. We have gotten a lot of questions on the matter, and we've discussed this quite a bit. And the idea is to convert a four-stroke Lada engine that is water-cooled by design to air-cooling. I mean, air-cooled engines are out there, they exist, and so let's give this a try. I am very curious to find out whether it's possible. Who knows, we might even be able to pull it off. As in, go ahead and convert a regular old Lada engine into one that is air-cooled. Well, let's get to work then. Enough talk. We need to come up with something and make it happen. We convert a lot of motor to air cooling. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Okay, we've dropped the fluids, removed the radiator and all of the associated bits. There's nothing left in there. We obviously needed to get some airflow going, and quite a lot of it. For that purpose, we've got this interior fan right here. All of the hoses we removed, and we've cut out an inlet in the block for the fan to blow into. It's going to be blowing air right onto the cylinders. Now, this is actually more convenient than positioning it up front. As for the cylinder head, we've drilled some holes around the spark plugs in the area where you're meant to have coolant. That's to provide good ventilation for the cylinder head. This actually has a pretty nice clean look to it. Now let me tell you about how we are going to be monitoring the temperature. We'll still be running the stock sensor, I mean, what difference does it really make? Whether it's surrounded by coolant or air, at the end of the day, it will still show us how hot the environment is around it. And on top of that, we fitted an oil temperature sensor. The reason for that being, well, as a lot of you know, motor oil is only going to work up to about 125 degrees Celsius. Overheating the oil is something we'd prefer to avoid. So, as you can see, it's all pretty straightforward. We are feeding in plenty of air, so the engine will receive proper ventilation. Plus, we're going to be monitoring the oil and uh, cooling air, I guess, temperatures. Yeah, two sensors should be more than enough to keep track of it. Time to drive. This thing is so loud. Time to go outside. And this is a long wheelbase car. I think now might be a good time to switch the... The oil sensor actually has to be powered up individually. It's on. Okay. All sensors are operational. The oil isn't even close to warming up. The air temp sensor is also not showing me anything yet. I guess now we wait for a bit. Everything is up and running. Let's see how long this takes. I am very curious. That's a bit too fast of an idle. Five minutes later. Okay, so the temperature is rising, but not to the extent that it would be alarming. But then the car is idling. Granted, the revs are a bit high, but the engine is under no load. Of course it'll be alright. Okay, ten minutes later. So a bit of time has passed, and the oil temperature is on the rise. So the oil is starting to warm up. However, the sensor inside the cylinder head is telling me that the engine is still cold. Fifteen minutes later. 
So a bit of time has gone by, and this isn't getting much hotter. We've been idling here for maybe about 15 minutes, and nothing is really happening. But now I suspect that this is going to start to warm up. Here we go. The revs are higher, the engine is under more stress. We're looking good. And here we go. Okay, so the coolant temperature sensor, which is currently measuring the air temperature, it is showing a considerable increase. It's risen by quite a bit. There we go. The oil temperature has risen past the 85 degree mark. It's getting hot for some reason. As for the engine temp, that's in the red, albeit barely. Why that's not a problem? Well, this engine is no longer water cooled. Instead, it's being cooled by air. So I think this is a completely normal situation. The engine oil temperature is just over 85 degrees Celsius. Everything is looking fairly normal so far. Okay, I've done one lap, and I think I'd better go for another lap for good measure. Okay, so if it's refusing to severely overheat, I guess that means one lap isn't enough then. Here we go. Let's do a bit of back and forth. Now the engine temperature itself is right on the threshold, right on the edge of the red. We are not supposed to be driving, since the engine is overheating at this point. It would be if it were water-cooled anyway. I guess we don't really mind with it being air-cooled. Let's go somewhere else to drive. For a clearer picture. That's 90. It has gotten a bit higher. That's 96, 97 degrees, which isn't critical. It's totally normal. What's going on up here? The needle is well into the red. And there's no sign of the temperature wanting to go down. But okay. I don't think we're in any trouble. I think we're good for the time being. So the sensor after an hour of driving. <laughs> the coolant temperature sensor, it's at the edge of the red, but it's not going any further. Though it might just be maxed out, I don't know. Yeah, the needle is blown far past the red. The engine is still operational, though. It's happily propelling the car as if there's nothing abnormal about this. It just does not care. At all. But what if we measure the temperature using a pyrometer? You take a reading. Oh, he's brought two with him. Curious to see how much it's going to show. 150 for real? Okay. What about the oil? The oil... It's 117, 116 degrees or thereabouts. Actually, no. But we're dangerously close to 120. And at that point, it's a wrap. I'm going to keep on driving now. Let me flip around. 
After 90 minutes of driving, Excellent. That's maxed out. As for... Oh my, that's a warning light. I didn't even notice how the temperature got up to... 120 degrees. Okay. 120 degrees end up is an overheating scenario. And here we are. The temperature has exceeded 120 degrees. And that's an issue. Now let's measure the temperature once again using a pyrometer. This is sketchy. Anywhere from 130 to 165 degrees. Ranges from 130 to 165? Yeah, that is just way too high. That's totally unacceptable. Ten minutes later. Come on, you can do it. It can barely even start. But then how can it even start when the engine temperature gauge is so far out of range? We've literally pinned the needle at this point. The oil temperature is at 135 degrees. This is about to crap out. Though not necessarily. Come on. Yeah, I also think it should be able to start. Nah, it still fires... I wanted to say it fires up, but it does not. It runs. It still runs, will you? Look at that. I don't even know what temperature that is. We are definitely overheating. The oil temperature has exceeded 140 degrees. Holy cow. But okay. It's still running. And that's great. How much is that? They're checking it with a pyrometer. Yeah, it is... 170? Oh, wow. For real? The gaskets are gonna start burning up at such temperature. The gaskets are gonna burn up. Oh, yeah? Yep. Now, the engine was not overheating initially, but just as I assumed, as soon as the oil temperature began to rise, the engine temperature was quick to follow. That's exactly how things played out. I was able to get the oil temperature up to in excess of 140 degrees Celsius, and that is severe overheating. The oil is as good as waste at this point. It can no longer be used. Oil should not be heated up like that. And even though we've provided the inside of the engine with plenty of air, we weren't able to successfully cool it. There just wasn't enough heat exchange going on. So our first crack at converting a water-cooled engine into one that's air-cooled failed. I feel like we're missing something here. Hopefully we can figure that out together. So you share your thoughts in the comments for us to read, and I reckon we should be able to get this to work, and successfully convert a water-cooled Lada engine into one that is air-cooled. And that's all I got for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. Alright, catch you later.